Do you adequately plan for your adventures? You'll want to stick around. Welcome back to Outdoor Skills Made Easy. You know, no hike or trek or river trip ever goes as planned. That's why pre-planning is so important. Whether it's a weather incident or someone gets injured or you've got a hundred different things going on with your vehicle or your equipment, pre-planning can really save the day. We had a river trip that was about six days long and it was in a wilderness area. So we needed to do a lot of pre-planning. It took planning on preparation for vehicles, for equipment, for backup supplies for our equipment, for first aid, food and food equipment, and we even had to worry about what are we going to do with our waste because it was a wilderness area. So all of these things had to be checked off on our list. If we hadn't have done that, we would have had some serious problems. At one point in the river trip, one of the rafts was snagged on a rock and it tore the raft. But our pre-planning had said, why don't you take some equipment to sew up that raft? So I was able to sew the raft up and it just cost us about an hour. So not a problem at all. We want to help you eliminate the learning curve. So if you've not done pre-planning for your next adventure, we hope that you can take some of these points and use them. While you're planning your next adventure, you need to consider some things like, do I need some permits for the trails I'm going to hike? Or do I need a permit for the river I'm going to run? Some of the very popular trails, for example, in Yellowstone, are difficult to get a permit for or maybe a reservation for a campsite while you're out in the wilderness area. So make sure that you check the permits to see if there really is a feasibility that you can go and do what you want to do. If you're considering a hike, you may want to check out alltrails.com. It's a great website that shows reviews from those that have hiked in the trails that you're considering. It will show you difficulty, elevation changes, and give you reviews from those that have gone before you. If you're considering doing a hike or maybe a river trip that's longer than something that you've done before, you may think about doing a fitness routine and even some skills training before you go. It's really important that you don't get halfway out on your trip and then run out of steam. Of all the items that you're thinking about taking, you want to make sure that you have a written checklist. Make sure you have a checklist for the group, which would include tents, uh, food, cooking equipment, sanitation supplies, repair kits, first aid kits, all of those things for the group. Secondly, make sure that you have a checkoff list for the individuals that want to come. That could include all of their personal gear, their sleeping bags, pads, everything that's essential. But if you're going without a checklist and someone misses something and you're out in the wilderness, it's going to be a difficult trek. As everyone's preparing for their trek, make sure that you have a pre-trek shakedown. So the night before or a couple of days before you go, everybody brings their gear, you bring the group gear, you bring the individual gear, and we check it off with the checklist to make sure that nothing is missing. Let's talk just for a second about transportation. On the trip that we went on that was a six day wilderness trip, we had to figure out how we were going to get there and then have the vehicle staged at the end of the river trip. This meant that drivers would drop us off, drive to the end of the trip, and then actually had to be flown back to the beginning to join us. When you're considering transportation on the way home, Think about having some additional stops. Remember, everybody's going to be tired, whether they're coming off the trek or they're coming off of the river. And if you have some designated stops on the way home, that will prevent those that are really tired from falling asleep. Don't forget to have a daily written itinerary, one that you take with you and one that you leave home with someone who's your contact at home. And also when you're out, make sure that you have a certain time that you check in with someone at home. That will let them know that you're safe, that things are going well, and if you don't check in with them at that time, then you will each have an emergency plan that you can go to, step B. And part of that checklist would be to have a list of the participants, maybe even a picture of them, have a list of the gear, so if you do have to send a rescuer, they will know how prepared you are and where you are likely to be. If you'd like to see a basic list of things that we consider doing, you can check out the link on our website. We hope that this has been informative and helpful to you, and we hope that you'll join us again at OSME TV.